Welcome to the March 5th Blue Earth County Board Meeting. Those that are able, please uh, rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> First item uh, is the agenda review. Mr. Meyer, please. Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. I'll move um, the agenda. So we have a motion and a second. Okay. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Carried. Uh, next, we will adjourn, or not adjourn, I'm sorry, we will recess uh, the county board meeting to uh, call to order the Economic uh, Development Authority meeting. Uh, we'll start with that agenda, Mr. Meyer, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, there are no changes to that agenda as well. Okay, I'll, heard move, I'll move approval of the agenda. Got second. a motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The agenda is approved. First item uh, on the agenda, item number three, we need to do something with the minutes from February 6th. I'll move the minutes. We've got a motion. Is there second. a second and a second? Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carried, the minutes are approved. Item number four on the agenda is a feasibility report for the capital improvement project. Uh, come on up folks and please identify yourself for the camera. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nancy Bolkelman with the City of Mankato EDA. Um, and I have here today uh, Luke Frederick or Luke Pedersen from um, our facilities uh, department to present a feasibility report. Okay, good morning, Nancy. Luke, whenever you're ready. Good morning, Chair and members of the board. Um, I'm here to present the resolution to order the 311 Second Avenue uh, Foundation Repair Project in uh, Mapleton, Minnesota. Um, project highlights include removing and replacing North Foundation masonry wall of the home due to bowing and separating from the sill plate. Um, backfilling new foundation area with suitable materials. Uh, regrade the north side of the lot to promote drainage uh, away from the new foundation wall and wet proofing of the new foundation wall. Um, if approved, we expect this project to take place this summer uh, of 2024. Any questions? Did you look at steel rods instead of all of uh, We did, we did weigh that and uh, I my supervisor and myself talked it over and we thought that this would be a more permanent and better option. Okay. Cost difference would be pretty big though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. Um, we are, we're planning to hold on to that property for a while, so we figured we'd do a more permanent repair. What do you think the uh, time it would last if you threw in the steel rods? Uh, it's very hard to say, but I, after look, or talking it over and um, having the architect and the structural engineer look at it, they thought this would be a more permanent option. Okay. Okay. I guess I would just add that I, I do believe too that it'd be more permanent as a son in law of a bricklayer that's put a lot of rods in basements. What the rods do is it just makes the whole wall fall down as a unit because the wall sticks together, but if you still don't have the structural integrity, it makes it a little tougher. So, any other clarifying questions? Are we ready for a motion? I'll move approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? Other discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion is carried. The feasibility report is approved. I'm seeing no other items on the agenda. Uh, we are adjourned. Thanks. Thanks Thank guys. you. Thank you. It's seeing you. At this time, we will call back to order the, the board meeting and item number four um, on our agenda, packet number two is County Ditch 78. And I would just add as, we're, as Mark is coming up here that uh, the chair is a landowner um, on this. So full disclosure, I don't just doesn't feel, you know, affect me any differently than anybody else, so I plan to 
participate, but just wanted to make sure that uh, that was noted. So, uh, good morning, Mark. Uh, first thing we'll do on the uh, agenda uh, for that is to review it. Um, Mr. Meyer, is there review the agenda, please? Uh, Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. Okay, we hear that. Is Move there, to approve. There's a motion to approve the agenda. Second. And a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion carried. The agenda is reviewed. Uh, item number two is the jurisdictional document. So, Mark, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mark Manderfeld, uh, Deputy Director of Property and Environmental Resources. Morning, Mark. Good morning. Um, the hearing notice was mailed to landowners on February 20th, 2024. Uh, it was also posted in the Mankato Free Press on the 22nd of February. And it was posted at the courthouse here uh, on February 21st of 2024. And as required by statute, um, we are to read the um, <coughs> Department of Revenue or Department of Natural Resources advisory letter. So I'll do that at this time. <coughs> Excuse me. Subject matter is the preliminary engineer's report for uh, County Ditch 78 Branch 1 improvement, uh, Blue Earth County Drainage Authority. Thank you for the opportunity to review the proposed Blue Earth County Ditch 78 improvement project and pre preliminary engineer's report. We offer the following comments in accordance to Minnesota Statute 103E.255 on behalf of the Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Given the management history, scope, and scale of the proposed improvement project, the preliminary engineer's report is adequate. The PER mentions that uh, this portion of County Ditch 78 system was improved in 2018 when storage was added to redu reduce peak flows rates at, out of Branch 1 open ditch. The PER notes that storage was added by building up a berm along the ditch banks and altering the culvert within the field crossing to control flow rates and velocities downstream to the remaining County Ditch 78 system. The County Ditch 78 Improvement FER, uh, or Final uh, Engineer's Report, was submitted <coughs> in 2015 and states that the improvement will re result in increased system capacity and increased flows downstream, noting that Branch 1 open ditch overtops during the 25-year event uh, or more significant events, and that in-channel uh, in storage, which includes widening uh, ditch bottoms, building berms, and installing field crossing culverts, will mitigate these increased flows. In addition, the berms now keep flows up to the 100 year, or excuse me, keep flows up to the 100 year in the channel. Please provide information on how the proposed branch one improvement flows were incorporated into the 2015 storage modeling in the FER. The County Ditch 78 FER DNR has on file, signed uh, in July uh, of 2015, does not include this information. Please send the response to this letter, the meeting minutes, the findings of fact, the viewer's report, and the order issued by the drainage authority regarding this proposed improvement to the DNR when they become available. Signed, Todd Colander, uh, South District Manager. Okay, thank you, Mark. I ask at this time, are there any clarifying questions on the jurisdictional documents or the DNR letter from the board? If not, it would be appropriate to uh, accept the affidavits into the legal record ask for a motion so move have a motion second and a second discussion are we ready to vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those opposed no <laughs> motions carried we've accepted the affidavits into the legal record um anything else mark from your perspective no mr Chair. at this point i'll ask chuck brandle of isg to come up and review the engineer's report good morning right. chuck good morning majority chuck um, I'll give a short presentation. Uh, Joe Donkers did help with this, but he is not here today. Um, as we've, as previously stated, we're at the preliminary engineering or preliminary hearing. Uh, this is kind of a middle step in the process um, to make sure that the project is feasible, the outlet's adequate, um, and then later on there would be a final engineering report if we move forward after today. Um, from a uh, scheduling standpoint, uh, the order was July of last year. The PER was actually submitted in September, um, and we're here at the hearing. We did have a landowner meeting in January, uh, fairly well attended and, and went through the project. So just a little bit, um, this is a small portion of CD78, about 435 acres. 
Uh, the entire CD78 watershed is about 9,400 acres. There was a repair that was completed uh, around 2010. Um, and then the improvement that was completed in 2018, uh, if you look at the orange and purple areas, that improvement um, upsized a tile that was pretty much almost coming out of the ground at this point. I um, replaced it with the combination of 42 and 24 inch tile. Uh, the improvement stopped at a property line based on those that petitioned it at that time. And uh, this project, if we zoom in on this area, I'm just gonna jump ahead. Um, if we zoom in on this area, that piece stopped at this property line. It's proposed to take that to the end of where the county line is. So we did look at this as an option back in 2018. When the petition came in, it wasn't included. Now the landowners on that part of the watershed want to include that area. So we're extending what was done in 2018. Um, there was a 24 inch line brought to this property line. We'd continue that 24 inch line to the south side of the um, gravel road that's there. I've got a lot more information on the design, but we're, we're designing this to a half inch drainage coefficient. And the existing line, this is a profile of the existing and proposed line. It's almost less than two feet deep just north of the township road. So this is really getting it to today's standard, having a five foot deep or five feet of cover, um, um, protect it from uh, damage from equipment, and then uh, extending it at, at the same elevation that we had planned for back in 2018. So we planned for this, we designed the storage area for this, we knew it was eventually gonna happen, and now the petition's coming forward and, it's, and this portion is happening. Um, we would abandon the existing tile. Uh, we did put together <clears throat> a hydraulic model of the system back in 2018. It was actually done at, for the PER in 2016. We use a little different modeling software now, but we use that same model um, because we had already incorporated this information into it. When we look at the uh, flow rate comparisons, because we designed the storage area to accommodate this, we don't have any increase in peak flows from what we designed. So we essentially set up everything for this and now this petition is, is finishing this part of the system. Um, and just to give you an idea of what that storage area looks like, this is the grading of it. What we did is we widened out a portion of the existing open ditch, um, flatter side slopes, and then instead of putting in a large culvert, we put in a two culvert system where we had a smaller culvert at the bottom and a larger culvert up high so we can control those flows within the wider channel and then use some of that material to build up around the side so we protected the, the farmland from flooding. Um, so really the outlet is adequate because we've already designed it. We've designed it for this. We've factored in um, any changes uh, that would be included with this proposed improvement. Um, since this is the prelim, um, we don't have to approve separable maintenance at this time, but we're, we'll be asking for separable maintenance. It's an existing line that is um, fairly old, it's shallow, it's out of repair, and uh, this improvement would replace it. That separable maintenance would thus take a portion of the cost and spread it over the whole watershed, uh, which will be discussed at the final hearing. To repair this section of tile, it costs $81,000 to replace the 18 inch line. I wouldn't recommend it, it's too shallow. Um, doing the improvement with a 24 at an adequate depth costs approximately $104,000. The township does have some costs for crossing the road, essentially replacing the gravel. Um, so that would be a township cost. So the total project cost for landowners is $98,500. 58 estimated at this time. So it has a net cost of 22,000. Um, my estimation is that the viewers more than likely will find more than enough benefit for that difference. So we did look at multi-purpose drainage management in the watershed, but since we've already completed storage in this portion of the watershed, we're not recommending anything at this point except for water quality intakes at the road crossing. 
Um, the rest of the watershed, there are opportunities to do other things such as controlled drainage, some alternative side inlets, but those aren't proposed at this time, but they were looked at um, on the, under the previous project. Since those areas are outside of the improvement, nothing was done at that time. Um, the DNR did comment um, on the uh, model and the way that we incorporated the changes into the model is we took the same model that we had in 2018, we added an area for the improvement and changed that to a 24 inch line. Everything else remained the same. I plan on sending this model to the DNR uh, before the final hearing. We did have a meeting back in August before we submitted the uh, FER and at that time DNR staff <coughs> didn't have any comments when we met with them. Um, we covered a, a number of projects that day, but this one really wasn't a concern because we had already built the storage area. So plan on sending that to them and offering up a meeting if we need to go over this again. So it's our recommendation that um, the project is cost effective, practical, feasible, the outlet is adequate, and we'd recommend approval of the preliminary engineering report, uh, appointing viewers and uh, moving forward with the final engineering report. That's a summary of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Are there any clarifying questions from board members? No, sir. At this time, we'll open the public comment portion of the hearing. If you'd like to make a comment, please come to the podium. State your name and address for the record. Comments from the public are expected to be civil and respectful. Please note this meeting is being recorded. There's a five-minute time limit. County Administrator will give you a one-minute warning to let you know when you've used the allotted five minutes. In addition, the board may restrict or limit the time allotted to a person whose remarks are repetitive or not relevant to the matter under consideration by the board. Is there anyone wishing to make comments? Please come to the podium. <clears throat> the second time I will ask, is there anyone wishing to make com comments on County Ditch 78? For the third and final time, Anyone wishing to make comments for County Ditch 78? Hearing no further comments, I'll close the public comment portion of the hearing. Are there any other clarifying questions from the board? None for me, Mr. Chair. No. I would move <coughs> approval of the ask. Okay, we've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to accept <coughs> the findings in order, approving the preliminary survey report, and ordering the engineer to prepare a detailed survey report and appointing viewers. Discussion on the motion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion carried. Uh, that will be approved. Um, this concludes our agenda. We will uh, uh, adjourn the County Ditch 78 public hearing. Thank you for attending. As we go to item number five um, on the agenda, starting with tab three, uh, Mark, uh, County Ditch 56, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, regarding County Ditch 56, bids were received um, for multiple contractors uh, for the improvement project involving portions of County Ditch 56, Branch 22, and Branch 22, Lateral D1. Uh, these are located in Garden City and Lincoln Townships. The improvements include the installation of a new HDPE tile, including a new outlet into the open ditch of County Ditch 56. On Friday, February 16th, 2024, there were 13 bids submitted uh, and received for the improvement work. The engineer's estimate for the improvement project was $171,456.50. 13 bids submitted uh, were, are provided uh, below in the table, uh, with the lowest acceptable, accepted bid submitted from Selly uh, excavating with a lump sum bid of $141,724.50. ISG has worked with Selly Excavating in past projects uh, with similar scope of work, and uh, ISG is recommending the project be awarded to Selly Construction or Excavating. Uh, we are asking the County Ditch 56 Drainage Authority to award the bid to Selly Excavating in the amount of $141,724.50 for the CD 56 improvement project. Okay, you've heard the staff recommendation. Move to approve. We've got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second discussion. Questions? Okay, are we ready to vote? 
Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion is carried. Next on the agenda is County Ditch 86, tab number four. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next two items here are uh, setting acceptance hearings, the first one being County Ditch 86. A um, little background, Blue Earth County Ditch 86 is located in Blue, uh, Buford and Decoria Townships. The <coughs> Blue Earth County Drainage Authority established the improvement uh, back in October 2020, or October 2022, the project was awarded to Digger Enterprises. Our department uh, staff received the engineer's acceptance report for this petition improvement. All contractual work has been completed by the contractor. Uh, today, we are requesting the drainage authority to set the contract acceptance hearing date for March 19th, 2024 at 9 a.m. Uh, in this room. So moved. Okay, we've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second discussion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The motion's carried. The uh, hearing has been set. Next is... Uh, Ditch 86, uh, tab five. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, County Ditch 86, lateral X, um, is located in Buford Township. The Blue Earth County Drainage Authority established the improvement on October 25th, 2022. The project was awarded to Leland Drainage and Excavating. Uh, Property and Environmental Resources staff uh, received the engineer's acceptance report for this petition lateral improvement. All contractual work was completed by the contractor. Today we were we are requesting the drainage authority set a contract acceptance hearing date uh, for March 19th, 2024 at 9 a.m. in this room. So moved. Okay, we've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Motion's carried. We will set the, the acceptance hearing will be March 19th, 2024 at 9, 9 a.m. as part of this board meeting. Any other items? No, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We'll go Thank to you. item number six on the agenda, tab six, Thanks, public Chuck. works. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Ryan, when you're ready, we'll move to public works. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning sir. <clears throat> Thick packet today. Yeah, lots yeah, going you've on. You've got a lot of lot of votes to to get through here today. Are they, are they in question or no? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a busy season. Uh, that it is. <laughs> yeah, you tell me. <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> Making me nervous. That's <laughs> <laughs> reverse. Yeah. All right. The first action item we've got on our slate here today is consideration of bids for the 2024 maintenance gravel furnish and crushing contract. Three bids were received with Minnesota Paving and Materials as the low bidder at $6.95 per ton for the gravel maintenance gravel for a total of $278,000. We also have a bid alternate for um, crushing 10,000 tons of bituminous uh, wrap for $4.25 per ton. Uh, with that being said, I would recommend, uh, actually the other thing I should point out is that MPM's price is the same price as we received last year uh, from our low bidder. So good to see pricing starting to hold a little bit more steady on some of these things. So with that being said, I would recommend award to Minnesota Paving Materials for the 2024 uh, gravel crushing maintenance gravel contract. Move to approve. Okay, we've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion's carried. All right, thank you. Second action item is consideration of the 2024 motor grader rental contract, as the board may recall. This is for um, motor grader blading and snow plowing down in the very southwestern corner of the county. Uh, again, we only received one bid from Erosion Control Plus, previously worked <coughs> construction. Their 2024 unit price for the blade is $159 per hour, and for the blade with the snow plowing equipment, $181 per hour. The rates <coughs> are slightly higher than the 2023 contract unit prices, which were $154 per hour and $177 per hour. Uh, fairly minor cost increase. With that, I would recommend award to Erosion Control Plus. 
I'll move it. Okay, we've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion's carried. That is approved. Thank you. Action item number three, consideration of bids for state aid project 0076111013. This is for reconstruction of County State Aid Highway 11 from the West County line to County State Aid Highway 6 northwest of the city of Lake Crystal. Uh, the bid abstract was provided to the commissioners for your information. As you know, we don't share that until the bid has been awarded, then we will publish it on the project website. The engineer's estimate was $2,840,313.80. We received three bids, one being the low bid from R&E Enterprises of Mankato at $2,496,149.04, 12.12% under our estimate. So that's fantastic to see that. Uh, OMG Midwest, AKA Minnesota Paving and Materials was the second uh, bidder. And then Mathwitz Construction Company was the high bid and uh, MPM's bid was 1.74% under the engineer's estimate, and Mathowitz's bid was 4.65% over. With that being said, r &E did complete the last leg of County State at Highway 11. I would recommend a word to r &E Enterprises of Mankato for the low bid amount. So moved. Okay, second. we've got a motion and a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motions carried, the bids award to r &E Enterprises. All right, thank you. Action item number four, consider appraisal services proposal to complete a real estate appraisal for potential land acquisition of a portion of the parcel, undeveloped parcel of land of the north half of the lot directly west of the Vernon Center shop location as we discussed previously um, during our, I believe it was our January county board meeting. The board did provide approval for the county engineer to. Uh, request an appraisal for negotiation and purchase of that north half of that parcel. This obviously is something that the landowner has brought up to the county, their interest in selling that portion, and we would like to protect our rights. Uh, we have worked with appraisal services in the past. They've been responsive and provided quality results. The uh, fee to complete the narrative appraisal report is $1,000. They would anticipate having it completed within three weeks of receiving uh, the notice to proceed. With that, I would recommend approval of the, the proposal for the appraisal um, and authorization to proceed with the appraisal and discussion and negotiation with the landowner. I'll move approval. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, the appraisal is approved. All right, thank you. Action item number five, consider approval of the 2024 to 2028 transportation improvement plan. The plan is dated February 28th, 2024. It was published online for public comments the period of February 4th through February 21st with uh, several press releases, social media posts, and paid advertisements, paid advertisements in the Mankato Free Press, the Maple River Messenger, and the Lake Crystal Tribune. No public comments were received I would recommend approval of the 2024 to 2028 transportation improvement plan dated February 28th. We do approve. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second discussion. I don't have any discussion, but thank you for all your efforts in putting this plan together. We've had a couple work sessions on it, uh, presentations from many different people, and uh, just thank you for your work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Other questions? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. <coughs> Motion carried. The transportation plan is approved. All right. Moving along, consideration of an intent to cost participate agreement with the City of St. Clair for reconstruction of county stated highways 15 and 28 within city limits. This agreement details cost participation for project development, including plans and specifications. The city is responsible for 10% of the county stated highway eligible road items as well as 100% of their city utilities, including sanitary sewer and water main. And the city could be potentially responsible for its share of storm sewer flows that are contributed. So there it's percentage of the storm sewer system if they are contributing above and beyond the public road right of way. 
the city estimated project cost share total based on a, a high level construction estimate is one million two hundred fifteen thousand five hundred seventy two dollars and eighty five cents as the board is aware these intent to cost participate agreements are the first step in these cooperative projects uh, where we effectively agree that we both want to enter into this project and we acknowledge that we are going to incur costs for the development of said project and that we will cost participate according to the agreement for those development costs when we move into the actual reconstruction project we will develop the cooperative construction agreement based on the engineers estimated costs and actual contract costs and how the total project costs are subdivided with that being said i would recommend a war, uh, approval of this agreement <coughs> so moved got a motion Second. And a second discussion. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The uh, agreement is approved. Thank you. All right, moving on. Action item number seven is an intent to cost participate between Blue Earth County and the city of Mankato for the reconstruction of County State at Highway 5, which is 3rd Avenue from the intersection with North Riverfront Drive to just south of Summit Drive. Again, similar cost participation, however, we have a different model with respect to Mankato. They are responsible for 50% of the sidewalk and trail items, 100% of the city water main and sanitary sewer utilities, and its share of the storm sewer costs. City estimated project cost is $3,427,930. That is because they are looking at replacing all of their utilities throughout that corridor, which is very costly. Wow. Um, yeah. That's what really pushed the project into full reconstruction. We had initially scoped this as a uh, project where we could look at doing spot curb repairs and pulling out the pavement, perhaps inlaying concrete pavement. However, uh, when you have to replace all those city utilities, you're into full reconstruction. So, uh, with that being said, I would recommend approval of the City of Mankato Intent to Cost Participate Agreement for CASA 5. I'll move it. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, we will uh, uh, approve the intent to cost to participate agreement with the May City of Mankato. Next item, please. Next item is consideration of award for professional services agreement for consulting engineering design services for County State 8 Highway 5, 3rd Avenue from Riverfront Drive to Summit Avenue. Proposals were sent to three firms, Bolton and Mink, Stonebrook Engineering, and SRF Consulting. All three firms that we work with <coughs> regularly and, and uh, understand what the county is looking for. Two proposals were received, one from Bolton and Mink, one from Stonebrook Engineering. SRF did not propose due to their current and forecasted workload. They were just too busy and didn't feel they could meet our objectives um, right now. After evaluating the proposals, the staff recommends um, and then the scoring of the evaluation is provided for the county board to show how we objectively evaluate these proposals and how the scoring is broken down. It's evaluated by three of our staff, including myself, and then we uh, conglomerate the scores to develop a recommendation. With that being said, um, both were very good proposals. However, at this point in time, we felt like Bolton and Mink had a much stronger grasp of the project demands due to their knowledge of the the area and, and previous work experience in that vicinity. So with that being said, we would recommend award of a professional services contract to Bolton and Mink for a uh, total cost of $402,783. I'll move that. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second. Discussion. Any questions? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, Bolton and Mink is approved. Thank you. Action mm -hmm. item number nine is consideration of a resolution authorizing application for a Minnesota Department of Natural Resources outdoor recreation grant for the replacement of playground equipment within the camp area, I believe campsite, camp area number three, at Daly Park. We had utilized this grant previously for Bray Park for the replacement of the playground equipment. It'll pay for 50% of the total project cost. Uh, we had previously applied uh, for this grant application last year and were unsuccessful. So we've 
made some improvements to our grant <coughs> application and are hopeful that this year we will be successful. This resolution is required as part of the grant application agreement, or uh, application. So with that being said, I would recommend approval of the resolution included in your packet. So moved. And a motion. Second. And a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The resolution is approved. Okay. Action item number 10 is a request for authorization to proceed with bidding State Aid Project 007 669008. This is the County State Aid Highway 69 Mini Opa Tunnel Repairs. I've included a memorandum in your packet providing information regarding this tunnel. Uh, this is a huge limestone arch tunnel that we began construct in construction in 1879 and had additions in 1905 and 1927. The tunnel goes underneath County State Aid Highway 69 just to the east of Miniopa State Park's entrance. So the tunnel goes underneath the um, county road and then it also goes underneath the railroad. So it's a continuous tunnel through the three different pieces and that's, that's detailed in the project plans that I believe I had included in your packet uh, denoting the differences in the uh, jurisdictions for the tunnel. With that being said, in 2013, there was significant deterioration at the flow line and uh, the county went in. There's, there's a remnants of an access road down the hill that we had cleared out for that that's still available to us. Had gone in and actually had poured a reinforced concrete um, gutter pan or, or flow line in the base of the tunnel because we were noting that there was erosion happening or scour happening around the, the foundation materials of the tunnel. We repaired all but set the, the last 70 feet of it because at the time that looked like it was in okay shape. During routine bridge safety inspections in 2023, uh, the staff noted about a four foot scour hole. Um, so with that being said, uh, we, we put together plans quickly to go in, pump out that water, fill that basin with concrete to stabilize that, and then complete again a reinforced uh, concrete pan to, to, to handle that baseline flow through the tunnel. This would wrap up repairs in our portion of the tunnel. <coughs> The rest of it is obviously, again, the jurisdiction of the railroad. So we estimate the project cost to be $164,000. And um, we're prepared as soon as permits are received to bid the work. So it could be bid um, as early as April. And then we would give the contractor a, a little bit longer window over the course of the summer, ideally when things are dry, to go in, do their bypass pumping, and do this repair. It's really not a terribly long scope project is just getting down the hill and getting the equipment up and down and the materials there. So we do not have this included in our transportation improvement plan. Again, it kind of came up on us quickly and instead of putting it into the tip after it had already been published for public comment, I, I chose to just bring it to the board in this fashion. With that, I would recommend authorization to proceed uh, an approval to bid this project. Okay. We'll approve. We've got a motion. Second. And a second discussion. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. when they did that repair in 2013, did they do some uh, sprayable concrete on the walls or somewhere too? The somewhere railroad else? did, yes. The railroad did, yep. okay. So after we went in, we also noted that the railroad section was in terrible condition because we walked all the way through the tunnel and after about a year of hen pecking, um, Al got the railroad to finally go down and they used some shotcrete to do yep. some repairs on their segment. Yeah, I actually went down and seen that. That's why I recall yeah. it. It's a, it's a hike up amazing. and down that without the access road. It's pretty neat, yeah. Yeah. Well, even with the access road. It's still a hike, yes. Uh, but yeah, the, the page four of the project plans that was included kind of shows, you know, where our jurisdiction starts at the at the inlet of the tunnel that's carrying Minneopa Creek and then gets to the segment that's being repaired. Um, shows the staging area, and then the railroad right of way obviously breaks off and the rest of the tunnel is owned by the railroad, so. Do we inspect that part then too, Ryan, or? We, we do just out of due diligence. However, the, we don't do reporting on okay. it. If we observe. If you see something alarming, you would let someone know. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Other discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, we'll advertise for bids on uh, April 9th. 
Thank you. Uh, consideration of action item number 11. Consider MnDOT contract 1056242 to agency agreement for state project 088-596-002. This is the carbon reduction program grant for the purchase of the seven electric vehicle pickups, which we've approved the agreement with uh, some of our peer counties where we will purchase um, seven EV pickups and we will sell them six or they will purchase, pay us back for six of them and we'll keep one. This is the MnDOT agreement we've been waiting on. It's finally cleared all of the different hoops. So once this is executed, we will be in position to advertise for these EV pickups and receive those advertisements. I would hopefully anticipate bringing those bids to you in uh, April, assuming that MnDOT turns around the paperwork relatively and the grant agreement is approved. So there is also at the back of the, and it's action item number 12, is a resolution for said contract and uh, state project number authorizing the board and the county to enter into this agreement. Um, I would request approval of action item number 10 and 11, which is the MnDOT contract and then the supporting resolution that's attached to it. Can we put them in 12? Would you like to do them can separately? Can we put them both together? You certainly yeah. can. So like moved. To. Second. Okay, we've got, no, got a motion and a second to approve item number 11 and 12 with electric vehicle contract and resolution discussion. How many, <clears throat> how many do you say? Seven total pickups and um, again, we'll only be keeping one. The, the surrounding counties that we partnered with will be reimbursing us for the non-federal share of those other six pickups. A little right. bit under total purchase price, a little bit under, I believe, about $480,000. Other discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The contract and the resolution are approved. All right. Moving into informational item updates, County Stated Highway 13 project is still remained under construction. The co bridge contractor is working on placing the form work. Uh, they should be wrapping that up this week, and then they will subsequently turn around and start placing reinforcing steel for the bridge deck and tying that. Uh, we anticipate that will begin later this week, and it's likely that the contractor will look to pour the bridge deck in mid-March as long as temperatures continue to stay suitable. So puts us in very good condition for load restrictions to come off in April and work to begin as long as things are adequate moisture levels and, and they can begin. So it's uh, we, we definitely caught it at the right time and took that risk at the right time to have that project going on over the course of the winter. Okay. County State at Highway 11, once the pre-construction meeting is held following contract approvals, we'll provide a more detailed work plan and schedule for the contractor. Victory Drive, County State at Highway 82, from south of Hoffman Road to Fair Street. Again, that southern segment, which is effectively south of Hoffman to south of Maine. Final plans for both projects is planned for construction this year and then the subsequent piece to the north next year. Final plans for both projects were submitted to MnDOT late last week for their approval. As soon as we get those back, we will look to uh, begin bidding those. We are still working on acquiring a handful of additional easements that are necessary to complete the project. Jack has had good conversations with the adjacent landowners. And again, they're kind of slope easements just to be able to go back and match things in and provide a nice finish. We aren't taking anything permanently. And then we are still also waiting on the local road improvement program grant application that we submitted to MnDOT for a portion of this project funding. It's up to $1.5 million is what we applied for. So if we were successful in that application, that would be tremendous, uh, not only for this project, but it would free up resources for other projects within our program. I could see us moving several bridges forward, if that were the case, and or box culvert projects that are sorely needed. So we're very hopeful that we get that local road improvement program grant. That should be announced, I believe, late March or latest early April. We do have a provision to extend the, the bid award if need be until that's been announced. That's a requirement of that grant application. County State Highway 5 from Riverfront to Summit. We've taken advantage of minimal <coughs> snow over the course of the winter to complete topographical survey along that corridor. So a lot of the preliminary work is done once the consultant agreement and intent to cost participate payment, easy for me to say, intent to cost participate agreements are executed. 
uh, the consultant will begin design services for that project and uh, there will be considerable amount of public outreach and coordination with the businesses along that sector. The County Stated Highway 29 bridge replacement project is moving forward as well. Final plans and supporting documentation were submitted to MnDOT and for them to provide uh, approval of those documents as well as they must provide employment goals for contracts and coordinate the project bid letting date with the county because again that project is federally funded. Um, that was one of the projects that we did receive IIJA funding program dollars for. So it was good to see that getting put to work in our county. And then we would anticipate opening bids for the bridge project in mid-April to early May. It's really to be determined based on MnDOT turning those documents around. Those federal projects always tend to flow slower than state-funded projects or locally funded projects. County State Highway 15 and 28 in St. Clair. Uh, once we have the intent to cost participate agreement fully executed, we will request a proposal for design services for that project. Typically speaking, in these circumstances, uh, we work with the city's consultant engineer because of their knowledge of the utilities and their local presence and ownerships of the project. So uh, I would assume that'll be the case here as well, but we will run that through the county. Casa 10 from the West County line to Casa 20. The preliminary bridge plan has been approved by MnDOT. The final bridge plans are being designed and should be submitted, the 90% plans at least to MnDOT by the end of March. That's important because we've got that project planned for next year and the bridge will be a significant cost portion of the project similar to the Casa 13 bridge this year. We really want to try to get those bridge plans approved as quickly as possible because there is still about $30 million of bridge bonding funds available. So we're pushing our design consultant to get as many bridges designed, finalized, and, and done so that we can um, secure funding for those bridges, at least for the 50% that the state will pay for on our county state and highway system. And last but not least, the County State at Highway 40 slope repair project. I, th I think, uh, I'm not sure if any of the commissioners have been out to look at that, but there's a, a, a major scour issue and erosion issue adjacent to the river mm -hmm. on the east leg of Casa 40 as it, as it goes. You know, Casa 40 is down um, southwest of Amboy, and it's a horseshoe um, that connects to Highway 30 on both ends. The, I would say the north south segment on the east side, there's a major scour and erosion issue. Uh, we did secure federal funding to pay for 80% of the total project cost, about $320,000 of federal funds to help with that project. So staff is designing that. We've got to get project memorandum and environmental documentation in. Uh, so we're working on design of that and keeping that moving along with everything else. Maintenance crews have been busy reclaiming gravel shoulders, blading gravel roads when moisture levels are adequate, cutting trees and clearing road right of way. They've caught up on guardrail repair work projects. And if temperatures stay reasonable, they're going to plan to begin crack sealing in March, which is really early. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, I've seen the state has been out doing it as well. So, um, then the EV pickups, carbon I think I've already hit on that, that you know, we're going to be bidding those and bringing those forward for consideration soon. Last but not least, I provided a Rapidan Dam memorandum update on February 1st. The Department of Homeland Security Emergency Management provided the approval of the county request for a time extension to that grant. So as you may recall, a long time ago, I submitted a request to extend our, our grant. The deadline actually went by in June of 2023, and I requested an extension request well prior to that. We just heard back again on February 1st that they are willing to extend that. We did not get the, the complete period that we requested. They gave us a two-year extension to June 12th, 2025. The total FEMA grant amount is $2,675,000 that we work to apply for. That consists of $1,637,500 for repairs and $1,038,000 for hazard mitigation. So if we were to pursue removal of the dam, we would only get the repair payment, not the hazard mitigation payment is my understanding. Yeah. Questions on that? That's I know we've talked about that grant application quite a bit. And, I'm glad we, we didn't lose it because it was a tremendous pain to get it to start with. So um, it, was, it was painful and added a lot of gray hairs to my head, but we have it. Um, we can use it for um, studies and things of that nature. So depending where this licensure surrender goes, um, we, we at least may have a resource to help us with funding a study. Uh, we, have, we obviously have to work through a lot of the red tape or if gate repairs are mandated, we, we should be able to use it for that as well. It would require a change in scope, however. 
On February 7th, the FERC provided dam safety inspection report for the uh, period of September 16th, 2022 to July 11th, 2023. So again, you're kind of seeing these speed of uh, federal government and the, the timeliness, but it's a substantial report. Um, and it states that at the time of the inspection, the powerhouse remains inoperative and all five gates remain in the locked, fully open position. However, there were no observations with respect to dam safety that required immediate remedial action. Monitoring also continues of the cracking in the right non-overflow buttress walls. The August 7, 2023 post-inspection letter contains six comments and recommendations. On April 14, 2023, Blue Earth County filed an application for surrender of exemption. These are currently being addressed in separate submittals and are under review. Based on field observation and a file review, no matters of non-compliance were noted. So that's, that's good to hear. Um, and then on February 15th, Bar Engineering, following up with FERC again on the licensure surrender, still really no substantial news. The FERC indicated it was good that the State Historic Preservation Office did not disagree with the FERC determination of no adverse impact. Um, aside from that, we really don't have any substantial news. So that concludes my report. More than happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Questions? Very thorough. Glad you're all still awake. Very thorough. Thank you very much. I have a question for the comment just to point out that you got 16 agenda items and drainage only had four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you have the right kind of weather to get some things Absolutely. accomplished. So. Absolutely. Good. Right. Uh, agenda item number seven, tab Thanks number right. seven, is the county attorney's written report for our information. Uh, item number eight uh, is administrator's report. Mr. Meyer. Mr. Chair and uh, commissioners, the first item is the county board minutes for February 20th. I'll move the minutes. Second. So we got a motion and a second. Discussion? Okay, are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. The February 20th, 2024 minutes are approved. Next are the bills for the two weeks indicated. Move to approve. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the bills. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The bills are approved. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, item number 10 in your packet is the Human Resources Department agenda. Do have one action item for the board's consideration today, and that is authorization to initiate recruitment for a business analyst slash application developer in our information technology uh, department. This really relates to item E and the informational items where we did have a staff person who has um, information technology background that was working in our human services area took a promotion to a position in our information technology department that created some discussion internally within the organization whether it still made sense for that human service position to remain in that department um, the way that position has evolved over time it's making more sense now for that position to reside in our information technology department and so we wanted to make that departmental shift and also elevate the position to be equal with the business analyst and application developers so this is a band and grade um, request change from a grade six to a grade seven as a part of that overall reorganization of the position so i'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have otherwise requesting approval of that uh, um, position change. I'll move approval. Second. We had a motion and a second. Discussion? We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. It is approved. Thank you. Under informational items, uh, first item is uh, we have filled a clerical specialist position in our human services department. We also had a lateral transfer of a social worker in our behavioral health uh, case management and intake uh, area. 
And so um, we've initiated recruitment to refill that uh, case manager intake position. Uh, then we had uh, uh, filled a position, uh, clerical specialist two position in our human services department. Item E was talked about as a part of that action item. Uh, item F, we did fill a part-time correctional officer in the jail. And then in the jail, we also had a voluntary demotion from a sergeant to a clerical specialist position in the sheriff's uh, office. And so uh, we've initiated recruitment to refill that sergeant position. We also had a resignation of a correctional officer in the jail, so we've initiated recruitment to refill that position. Then we filled um, two 911 telecommunicator or dispatch positions in the sheriff's office. Item M is a change of employment status, so we had a probation officer, one that was a temporary position that uh, as a result of a newly budgeted position, we moved that uh, person into a permanent or full-time probation officer position. And then lastly, we've uh, filled an assistant uh, veteran service officer position in our veteran service office. A lot of information continuing to happen, uh, a lot of activity in our human resources <coughs> area, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Any questions or concerns? Thank you. All right, item number 11 in your packet then is an application to conduct off-site gambling. Uh, the Wasika Hockey Association currently has a gambling permit, but they want to do an off-site activity at Indian Island Winery on April 20th. And so bringing that forward for the board's consideration today. I'll move approval. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second, discussion. And we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion's carried. Well, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I have number 12 in your packet then as a memo regarding uh, uh, the hazard, hazard mitigation plan uh, assistance agreement. The Sheriff's Office through their emergency management area is in the preliminary stage of updating the hazard mitigation plan. Uh, this needs to be done on a five-year cycle and our current plan expires next March. We are eligible to receive some Minnesota Homeland Security and Emergency Management funding to support the technical aspects of the plan update. And so uh, we have a resolution attached at uh, tab 12 that outlines um, the uh, activities and the request for that funding. So we're recommending uh, board action there. I'll move it. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second. Discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion's carried. The resolution is approved. Item number 13 in your packet is a memorandum regarding the Minnesota River uh, Mankato uh, One Watershed, One Plan process. Um, just over 12% of Blue Earth County is in the Minnesota River Mankato watershed. Um, last August, uh, the Board of Water and Soil Resources, or Bowser, approved a grant to create the Minnesota River Mankato watershed plan. Uh, this planning effort uh, will include the counties and soil and water conservation districts from Blue Earth County, Lesueur County, as well as Nicollet County, with Nicollet County serving as the fiscal agent and the grant administrator for this effort. A memorandum of agreement for the watershed planning effort has been drafted and reviewed by the participating organizations. Uh, the agreement is based on a Bowser template and is similar to the agreements that we currently have in place for the Blue Earth River watershed as well as the Lesueur River watershed. Um, after the planning agreement is signed by all of the participating organizations, a work plan, timeline, and budget for the planning effort will be developed and approved by a policy committee. Um, 
It is expected that we will engage a consultant to lead the planning effort later this spring um, and uh, the planning process will uh, begin in the summer of 2024. So the board action recommended today is approval of the memorandum of agreement to implement the Minnesota River Mankato Watershed Plan. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Discussion? Any questions? I would just add, you know, we've been involved in the in the Lesseur, one watershed, one plan, which was four counties and four SWCDs. And then uh, just getting started in the, the Blue Earth, um, which is four counties and one city, the thing unique, I think, in, in my opinion, on this one, this Minnesota, it's three counties, there's a little, not quite as many counties, but they have four cities, which is gonna be something different, and quite frankly, I believe is the, the most that cities have been involved, the most cities that have been involved um, in any of the one watershed, one plan. So we've got city of St. Peter, Lake Crystal, Mankato, and North Mankato at the table with this as well. Other questions or discussion? Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, <clears throat> no. The motion carried. We have approved the memorandum of agreement. Anything else, Mr. Meyer, for me? That's all I have for you, Mr. Chair. Item number nine on the uh, agenda is commissioner's reports on committees. Patty, would you like to go first? Uh, mine will be very short since I was sick for over a week. <laughs> Yesterday I had my NACO FIGA meeting and that is my report. Okay, thank you. Pass. Well, uh, mine isn't that much longer. Uh, after our board meeting, we left and went up to St. Paul for the AMC Ledge Conference. Um, that ended with our board of directors meeting on Wednesday, or on Thursday, excuse me. Uh, last week I did not have one meeting and yesterday I had a uh, uh, one year review for the CEO for MRCI and that's all I've got, sir. Okay, thank you. Kip. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My report is also very short. After our board meeting we met and had a discussion about the planning and zoning projects going on in Blue Earth County. I had a couple things with my SECB conference calls, several calls regarding uh, some ditch projects and some gravel road issues, and then the excitement of my two weeks was the Public Works Facility Planning and Commission meeting at Mankato Township, which we are all aware that uh, failed four to one or one abstain, so uh, lots of discussion, nothing new that we haven't heard, I don't believe, at the meeting uh, with our meetings that we had, we heard all of the concerns. Uh, they took it under advisement, but from my understanding, it'll go to the full board, three-member board this Thursday. So keep you posted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's my report. Thank you. Mark, please. Yeah, I have the same situation. Where I could be able to do everything. Um, we had our pedal past poverty uh, on the 29th of February, and um, I just want to thank everybody who actually contributed, which was actually 100%, so thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, brought in over uh, 60,000. And oh, nice. um, yeah, it, um, uh, we're branching, they're trying to get like maybe people that don't want to bike, but do more walking. So I, I, I think that's what's, that's gonna, next year will be even more of that. I, know, I, guess, I think I'm still biking. But I don't know. <laughs> We'll see how it goes, but appreciate everybody's support. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, since our February 20th board meeting, the planning and zoning drainage meeting was mentioned on the afternoon of the 20th. That evening, I participated in the Minnesota Rural Counties meeting um, as part of the legislative conference, uh, 21st and 22nd. Uh, participated in that as Environmental Policy Committee as well as the, the board meeting up there. On the 23rd, uh, participated in the University of Minnesota interview process for our county extension 4-H uh, um, educator, um, where we interviewed uh, three candidates there. On the 26th, 
we had the Blue Earth One Watershed One uh, One Plan meeting in the morning, and then the afternoon um, was the initial Minnesota River One Watershed One Plan meeting in Nicollet, and on March 4th was the JD 36 uh, pre-construction meeting that I attended, and that concludes my report. Um, that concludes today's agenda. Um, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.